Hey guys, Starcat here, and I want to talk you through the plans for my next character, which will be the Magma Orb Sire of Shards Berserker Rinos. Yes, Berserker Magma Orb Sire of Shards. Uh, briefly, just to summarize uh, why I'm stepping away from my last character, still alive, 88, 89, can't quite remember. Was clearing maps really well, pretty solid damage, pretty solid movement speed, was setting around about 200% movement speed, um, pretty nippy. Uh, the main thing I didn't like about it though is while it cleared um, Harbingers really cleanly, while it cleared maps really cleanly, because I went life um, instead of occultist, because I didn't want to worry about um, collecting the appropriate gear, I didn't want to have like the transition phase, which was a little bit awkward CI gear, I went with the tricks, I went with life. It's just awkward for bossing. You're playing a build with no real natural sustain, it has no easy form of leech. It only has 5 to 6k HP depending on gear and levels and that just feels kind of awkward when you get into, you know, farming the reds and doing the whole double boss, triple boss meta with the current, like, I know you do, kill, you do still kill bosses quite quickly but bosses do last a bit longer and the idea of the build was like course to carry blight, course to carry blight, course to carry blight. So I like melted all the packs really easily when you do have to kind of like stand in front of the boss and then you don't have any natural sustain, it just feels a little bit awkward. So I ended up uh, investing quite heavily into reduced flask charges used, meaning I had four uses on my HP pot, and I had like three to four uses on all my utility flasks, which still felt really good, but I was just like, this character's going to get one shot at some point, because it did have quite a small HP pot. So TLDR, I would still recommend it if you enjoy that kind of play style, if you just want like a quick farm currency character, or just like an easy starter to get a bit of stuff going. But if you want to really like spend a long time on the course card build, definitely do just go with Occultist. So from that I wanted to play a build which had very easy sustain and could just face tank stuff. So we've gone with Berserker. Reason being, Volpact is still Volpact, Volpact is still broken. Cloaked and Savagery, Stand, Face Tank, seems good. So then I was like, okay, so I want to play a Leech build. I then want to play a build which is good at like mass AoE farm. Since I want to, now that I've gotten a little bit of currency together, I want to just like make a proper character, just farm a bunch of beachheads, get my atlas rolling, and you know, just enjoy the new maps and stuff, especially since the new harbingers actually feel really good. So I thought, what's something I haven't played with in a while? Oh, I have the MTX for Magma Orb. Huh, people were doing Magma Orb Sarif Shards, and it wasn't actually that shit. Huh, don't think anyone's done it since the CI change. Huh, this will be something kind of you and people might find it interesting. Huh, let's do that and then put it on Berserker and then keep saying the word ha in my video. Ha. Huh. So yes, yeah, so this is the tree we've come up with. Root through all the life, come up. I know it feels really awkward not taking the full Sarn wheel, but trust me it makes sense later. So we have 176 life with 7k life. Decent, this is like a level 91 tree, 7k life with a comb. So without a comb, you're looking at like 5.7, 5.8? Yeah, just shy of 5.8 which is decent for while you're getting started. So like with your like whatever gear, with the Devotos, whatever, you're looking at like a decent HP total. Seems good. You then get the combs. You then, if you stick around on the carrots, get more levels for the more life or feel like you've got enough damage, drop some damage elsewhere for the more life. It's like a pretty solid base. Like this character fleshed out if you really spent a long time and if you played this uh, either very well in softcore and didn't fall over or if you just like were actually good at the game and played this in hardcore then you can very easily be looking at a just shy of 8k HP character. You've got more life available here. You've got more life available here for the grabs. Yeah, and that is using a no HP helm since we're using a Devotos because the only helm on hardcore with the plus two chain magma orb enchant, and if you don't know that adds more bounce to magma orb, which is very important, was a Devotos. This build does use a staff, so having the movement speed is also nice, and this build did need a bit of dex. So I was like, actually, this is a really good fit for the build because we need movement speed because we have a staff, we need to have shit movement skill options, we need a bit of extra deck so it frees up gearing other places, and we need the fucking helm enchant so it all just rolls together. The only other mandatory piece of gearing is obviously the Sire of Shards, and then the two inevitability Cobalt Jewels, which give additional um, projectiles and increased AoE with each chain, aka each bounce, which has synergy with everything else. Come up through here, go through the obvious stuff in Templar, pick up our first jewel, root up, this is where the tree looks a bit awkward. Most early variants I was playing with are coming this way. Sire of Shards is a staff. We want to use the good staff nodes. The reason I don't take these is it's just too many points. You fill it in, it's like eight points. You can get similar amounts of damage just investing in stuff here. We have enough crit without it. If you're a high enough level and you felt like you didn't need more life, you could come this way, but we're fine as is. 
get life, pick up some crit, pick up some crit multi, come through, pick up some crit, pick up some crit multi, come through. Dos Curse, I'm planning on using a Herald of Ice Assassin's Mark setup, and then I can use either Flammability or Projectile Weakness or Enfeeble or Temp Chains as a defensive blasphemy. If you get corrupted Amis, you can use combinations of the stuff I just mentioned. Come through, get a little bit of damage, a little bit of pen. Life, crit, AoE, second jewel. You would eventually want the Alchemist wheel. I think Alchemist is still worth getting. It's still solid, but it's not as mandatory as it was before. You still want it in your build if you touch it, but you just get it a little bit later. Come through, get crit, multi, just ah, so juicy. It's just like, wah. Come through, get some life, crit multi, wah. Come through, get some uh, spell damage, get some crit, get some crit multi. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. More crit, life, Volpax, last jewel. So you can see it's a pretty straightforward tree, and it's actually not that bad of a tree to level. You go, holy crap, Batman, that's a lot of traveling. This will be terrible to level. Nope, for leveling, you just root through melee and level asunder. Come up through here, get into AoE. You have two options at this point. You can either stick with sunder. Um, you can grab dual totems, level as Ancestral Warsheaf totems. You can transition into spells at this point, go Flame Blast totems. It's actually really not that bad at all. And it's a case of you get a bunch of early life. You can get some very easy early melee damage or spell damage if you go for the spell option. And yeah, that really isn't that bad. For Ascendancy, the order you want to get things, if you do decide to level as a spellcaster or transition to spellcaster as soon as possible, then get Pain Reaver as your first... Um, point because you need the mana leech to sustain your mana so that it doesn't feel shitty and the life leech feels good man even if you are just leveling this as like sunder still it's just a really solid first one to go for then go for aspect of carnage and then you pick up cloaks and savagery when you get yourself your vial pact gearing options things that you can think about using so originally i planned on making this also a queen of the forest build since i was like oh staff queen of the forest oh that can make it not feel so shitty you can make it work, as you can see, you can get decent-ish life values, but since I just played a character which felt a bit squishy, I was like, let's just do it properly. We do also get a bunch of damage from combs. Yeah, I probably will consider using a Queen Forest just as my like starter chest because it's really cheap and all you really need to put on a Queen Forest to make it not feel terrible is Grace and then run like Stib Knights and Jades. So that's really what I'd recommend for your start options. Otherwise, just any solid rare or a belly until you can afford the combs. Helms, you can use Devotos. You can use the Tempest Binding. The reason why you'd want to use the Tempest Binding is because of Herald of Ice OP, OP, OP. So what people are doing now is they're linking Ice Bite and even Onslaught in some cases to their Herald of Ice. And they're using it to generate Frenzy Charges and Onslaught. My current links... For my Herald of Ice, our Herald of Ice, Ice Spike, Curse on Hit, Assassin's Mark. To fit in the Onslaught, I'd need a fifth link, or alternatively, have the Tempestuous, oh, sorry, the Tempest Binding. Since the mana realization isn't that big of a deal, I currently have 33% mana unreserved with a juiced up Herald of Ice and a Blasphemy. If you started rocking in Lighted, you could then fit in an Art Karma or a second Herald, or in this case, just more links on your Herald. You have the flexibility there. Rimnar's Reserve Speech is difficult, is also a very solid helm. It gives you damage, it gives you good amount of life, it gives you resist, it also gives you immunity to chill and freeze. If you've used a fire skull recently, Magma Orb is a fire skull, you can probably hear my cat rapidly approaching, meaning you have 100% uptime on chill and freeze if you are attacking. Seems good. Sarve Shards, set and forget, because it makes our stuff boom, 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 boom. In the Nova, we get lots of AOE overlap going on. AOE overlap is OPOP, -OP, means we do solid dibs. Uh, that's my way of saying DPS. Otherwise, just gonna go for rares in every slot. For gloves, repentance gloves would be really nice. You can quite easily get upwards to like 500 ish strength if you get like nice strength stacked to gear. However, using repentance with a combs with a unique helm is like nigh impossible resist wise unless you somehow have amazing gear like mirror worthy gear. So if you're using repentance, you're probably not using the combs. This could be an option to use until you transition into the combs and you swap around. You'll also notice the build is just shy of the 306th int requirement. So if you got like an int strength, I mean, said I believe I'm running a strength dex. I mean, this current version, very solid, but because it gives you iron will, you can see it is actually a pretty substantial DPS increase. 
if you can make the resist work for you, definitely go for it. Otherwise, just res throughout. So yeah, get a rare helm, ideally with the enchant, then get repentance gloves. Running either a diamond ring or an opal ring just to get more deeps, or if you are running a bunch of uniques, just go for a resist ring. Having a little bit of extra crit is nice, and also for the person asking, Mate, why don't you get that power charge, you fucking nonce? Um, it's one of those things, since they've nerfed the amount of crit that power charges give, it just doesn't feel that great grabbing these, like, three points. You can do it, but I was kind of wanting to just invest into life, and there's access to so much good, like, DPS nodes. There's, like, everything on this tree is amazing. There's so much stuff you could go for. You could come down to nullification, especially if you do Queen of the Forest off, because this gives you more evasion. It gives you some resist. Sniper is really solid. A bit of proj speed equals more clear speed with your magma orb. You can just fill in Snowforge to come down two points into Cultist, into Heart and Soul, into Firewalker. You could fill in all of this over here. You could come down and pick up this crit multi stuff over here. You could get some aura reservation, fit more auras into the build. <laughs> there are options there are a lot of options otherwise you'd eventually want a yz oki um you probably won't be able to fit in a vinktar into this build just because it'll mess with your resist so you're probably going to go for either in its series promise and eventually a dying sun if you're a rich rich man but otherwise your setup will be a diamond flask wise oak quicksilver 100 percent um, then either another floating unique, then you can either go for another utility or a life. I'm going to try doing the no life pot meta that a lot of people are doing these days. I'm feeling berserker plus a leech, we should be chilly. If we're not chilly, then I'll drop my stib knight in this setup for a HP pot. Obviously the two inevitability jewels. If you were a clever man, you would spam buy these and corrupt them. They're fairly cheap, they're like an alk to a chaos each. And you want to corrupt it for the immune to silence, just because that's a very nice quality of life. You will be running a warding pot you should have up nearly all the time. But even so, it's a very nice thing to do. It's a huge improvement to your character, and the jewels are fairly cheap. So it's something to think about long, 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 long term. Also, when you talk about corruptions, again, if you do manage to fit in the repentance, repentance are very easy to mass buy and corrupt getting either any weakness on hit or temp chains on hit would be very nice either offensive or defensively the main links for the core setup are magma orb controlled destruction increased crit strikes faster proj for map clear than for bossing you run slower proj spell echo and fire pen mess around with your little setup here the only other super fancy thing is we are running a orb of storms arcane surge Power charge on crit, then either increased crit strikes or increased duration. It seems really stupid, but running increased duration has a slightly higher mana multiplier. The mana multiplier is high enough that you can then get a level 8 instead of a level 7 arcane surge. That's, you know, a DPS increase. Also, running increased duration gives you a longer duration of the arcane surge buff, which is pretty nice. However, the crit chance might just not be enough that it feels shitty so that's something you just play around with so pick which one you prefer do you want to go for crit strikes more reliable power charge generation and if your damage is good enough then the extra duration shouldn't really be an issue you don't want to have to be like refreshing your orb of storms to maintain the extra arcane surge damage on bosses but if your dps is good enough you don't need it and at that point you probably just want the reliability if you're doing lots of very long fights maybe think about increased duration as i said some kind of blasphemy flammability or enfeeble or whatever setup and then a flame dash faster casting i don't run a cast on damage taken because it's a combs build we'll have enough life we don't really care about taking spike damage because vile pact plus cloaked in savagery as long as we are pressing buttons we will be ao over the k um otherwise you can if you're using different setups like combs wise obviously run a cast on damage taken you can fit in a golem into an unset ring if you would like. I hate golems. I think they're just a blight among men, and I just don't like running them. If you want to run them, do that. This video's been a lot longer than I thought it would be, and we got a new haircut. Oh, trimmed. Mm. Yeah, it is four in the morning. Apologies for a slightly rambly video. I'm going to go go for a walk because my stomach really hurts, and walking helps my stomachs hurt less. I'm Taki. Have a good day. Bye bye, bye bye. Because I'm waving, I'm not clicking on the off button.
no one noticed. Smooth transition.